that context. A German Nobel laureate. You are here to teach German physics to Germans. Collection of Jews and foreigners. You're the shame of Germany. Order, please. I believe, I believe it is Friedrich Nietzsche who postulated that E equals MC squared. And from this, I believe it is a Hitler who postulated that Class and anarchists, Hungarian Jews out, no. Latins out, even German teachers are Jews. Communists who burn the Reichstag. You burn the Reichstag. Nazi filth. Scum. Jewish physique. Jewish physique! So, it would appear that Leo is on his way now, too. What's this? I've been prepared for the new Germany. I've been packed for weeks. I thought you were hiding your dirty laundry. Oh, Leo. Yes. We are losing the universities, Edward. Just like in Budapest. Men like Professor Heisenberg would never allow that. Heisenberg cannot stop it. And Heisenberg is a German. Don't forget it. Sooner or later, he will have to submit. Politicians aren't permanent, Leo. We have to believe they... Believe nothing! You are Jewish. I am Jewish. Mitzi, too. Trudy, come with me. You forget Hungary? No. When they beat people in the streets, looted their homes, Germany would be much worse. Austrian won't help, Rudy. Not for long. Where will you go? England, to start with. Sit here, please. All the European Jews should always keep a length of rope handy. for over two hours. Mr. Zillard, what are you doing in there? I am fishing for the secrets of the universe. There, you see? Oh. The water helps me to think. I'm trying an experiment with a game I saw today. 
I'll give you games. I want my verse. Mr. Zillard is an inventor, you know? But he's playing with little boats. He knows Albert Einstein. Don't you, Mr. Zillard? Yes. He tells me all about it. Claude. And how is the universe this afternoon, Mr. Zillard? Could I fix you a nice cup of tea? In the game, they throw a ball. It strikes the target ball, and that rolls and strikes another and another. Now, if we throw a particle, it strikes the nucleus, the nucleus ejects another particle, which could then strike another nucleus. And then that nucleus, the same thing again and again. A chain reaction. But why is the radioactive effect stronger in the water than out of it? Why? <laughs> We might have missed the last Nobel by hair, but we could very well get the next. As I have demonstrated, my eminent colleague has given an incorrect interpretation of her experiment. Madame Curie, despite the immense respect I have for you and your work, <coughs> I feel I must say that your daughter is wrong. To insist she is right when the entire international community can see that she is an error. <coughs> There's no need for my to launch a personal attack against Irene Curie. It's the same old story. It's Germany and France. If the French get the Nobel Prize, Aunt Lisa will die of jealousy. <laughs> it's so... Petty. <laughs> Just yeah. like European history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your companion did a fair job at demolishing the French. Frau Maiden and I, we describe what we have done. The Julio's uh, dilettantes. Quite honestly, Fermi, this rivalry between nations is mad. Science can only progress in an international brotherhood. Certo, yes. The Germans uh, experiment, and then the Julio Curies come within the head of discovering the neutron, and then uh, you end up with the medals. Does that really matter? Well, when it ends up that you get the Nobel Prize, I don't suppose it does. I see. When you leave Germany, come up to me at the Institute in Copenhagen. I can have you set up and working the day you arrive. Well, sir, I... No. Don't worry about money. <laughs> Irene may have a certain gift inherited from her mother, but her husband is an amateur. He only married her for the Curie name. <laughs> I did not agree with Frau Meitner's presentation for the most part. Your findings are very interesting. Thank you, Professor. Go on. Hungarian, hmm? You know this chap, Szilard? You've seen Leon? Oh, yes. Yes, he came up to Cambridge the other day. Wanted me to help him to get together some funds for some scheme. Yes, he's a bright fellow, Szilard, but uh, he should temper his presentation, I believe. We just couldn't do anything for him. I'm sure he'll find even less support at the military. And he should admit his predictions. They smack of cheap fiction. Predictions? Oh, that there'll be another war. Hmm. That we may fight with atoms. Neutrons, I said. They are the way into the atomic nucleus. But would they listen? 
my English castle. What do you think? Well, it's a... Uh, it looks rather like your German castle. Where's my room? The boarding house is full. So the landlady lent me the card. She thinks you're my cousin. Leo, it, it's... It's not that I question your manners, but... Uh, uh, she's quite wonderful, you shall see. She listens to everything I have to say. In return, I listen about the book she's reading. Wonderful books about uh, lovers in Argentina and uh, romance in the South Pacific. Uh, you should take my bed. It's more comfortable, I think. We'll have lunch. You'll feel much better. This is lunch in a newspaper? It's full in the mouth like a bouquet. And then it comes wrapped in the late edition. Leo, <laughs> oh, I do have a little money. Perhaps Don't I could... worry. I am sacrificing my own mother for science. This will get us a good dinner and rent me a gram of radium. You see, if I had my own radium, there are many labs who would give me space to work. Well, as it is, I spent my time to work with committees to help scientists, mostly Jews, to escape Europe. I find them teaching positions here in England or in America. We are going to see this film. No, I'm in London to look for a position, not to look at films. It has some wonderful ideas about the future of war. It's far-fetched in many ways, but the weapons. You see, I've been considering the atomic nucleus and... Huh? Oh. The peas and the beans. Yes, the peas and the beans. <laughs> No, 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 no. It would take equipment that is uh, something far bigger than a laboratory. Far, far bigger. Is that our omnibus? There comes a time when pure theory just isn't enough. Don't you agree? That is our omnibus. If I'm right, if a chain reaction of an explosive kind is possible, there will be an immense release of energy. Do you understand what that We means? can still catch it. Absolute power, an incredible weapon. Oh, 50, 100, 1,000 times the greatest. Wait, wait. The idea is in the air. I can't be the only one on to it. What right about up, the right Italians, up. the French? Right up. And oh. Germans. The Germans. Can you imagine Hitler? It could be a race. <laughs> it is a race. It's a race for the bomb. Do you understand? No. I'm not sure. I will explain it again. Beautiful. Joey, can we dance? Ah, que je t'aime. Oh, c'est pas vrai. What's going on? Let me look. Aluminum. A soupçon of alpha rays and a gagger counter. You will see. It's simplicity itself. Mademoiselle, if you would be so kind. Now remove the radioactive sauce. Hey, presto! Aluminium is still radioactive. But it's not possible. We made it radioactive, Maman. Artificially. But then with two more protons, aluminium will change into phosphorus. Yes, phosphorus. Then it disintegrates into silicon. We checked. The transmutation of matter. The ancient alchemist dream. I've been doing experiments lately, and I have been getting extraordinary results. Come, come, I'll show you. Nella, don't disturb your father. Look. In this tube, a source of neutrons. In this, uranium powder. We place them together. 
Oh, here's one. Please, Giorgio. Huh? And? Stop splashing. Echo. Ah. Now, we should see a very strange phenomenon. Ah, please, state buone, bambini, suo. Please, ah, please. <laughs> Listen to what happens when we place them in water. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, please be careful with that radioactivity. You're going to broil my frogs. Oh, they're my guinea pigs. Listen to the counter. Listen. Hear it? You see? When we bombard in water, uranium becomes much more unstable, more radioactive. And do you remember why? The water slows down the atom. Uh... It slows down the neutron and allows it to more easily penetrate uh... the atomic nucleus. Oh, yes. Yes. When neutrons go too fast, they ricochet like a pebble off the surface of the atom. I show you. When slowed down, <laughs> you see, it ends. With water, the tiny neutron can penetrate the atom. Bravo, Lord. Sei bravissima. It's getting worse. Oh. I think I leave the country right now. Oh. We'll be next. <laughs> oh, it's so very cold out here, my dear. So, uh, I have an excellent idea. We don't really warm up to the new There <laughs> us. Does it bother you, Professor Heisenberg, that there are so many German expatriates here? Bother me? No, no. Why should it? Science is international, and all of us, all scientists, are brothers. Mm. Why do you think we have this party? Well... Professor Bohr is the guiding light of modern physics. Why shouldn't we come and consult with him? I'm not referring to you or to Professor von Weizsäcker, sir. You are visitors, but to those who have fled Germany. You work for a scientific publication? No, sir. For a newspaper. Mm. <clears throat> Professors, would you care to stand in for a photograph? Mm. Such an honor. <laughs> Photo to the everlasting glory of Germany. Will you return to Germany, Dr. Better? Nope. And why is that? Because the university has thrown me out. Excuse me, please. Thrown you out. My grandmother is Jewish. It was a most unusual bureaucratic air, Hans. It will be corrected. How? By bombarding my grandmother with neutrons? Oh, Professor. Welcome, Edward. Welcome to Copenhagen. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> you know, you are free to stay here as long as you like. Come on. May I present my wife? Hello. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Copenhagen. Uh, mm, thanks. Mrs. Stella? Yes, two days ago. Oh. Uh, uh, well, uh, well, let's go. Have you heard from Leo? Yes, I saw him in London. He's got a test tube in one hand, a Geiger counter in the other. And with his feet, he runs something of an employment agency. And he's in love. With a person or a theory? with the theory of love, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Edward. May I have a word with you, please? Eisenberg wants to change Edward's mind. Get him back to Germany, you yes? You won't have to worry about the We're nonsense. here to kidnap all you runaways. Even Hungary. All you have to do is <clears throat> go back to <clears throat> Germany. No, I won't do that. No, I won't do Let that. Let me reconsider. No, I'm sorry. Would you stay in Denmark, Otto? Yes. But I'm worried about my Aunt Lise. She won't leave Germany. What about you? 
I'll go wherever Edward works, I suppose. If he was Goga, <laughs> I would go to Tahiti, but he isn't. Ready? <laughs> Let's go! Yahoo! Niels Bohr is stealing all our best minds. Copenhagen is too close to Berlin. They won't even stay here if Hitler goes on. Ah, Hitler and his people won't last long. Edward, this has become an obstacle race to the secrets of matter. There have been the English discoveries, the French and now Fermi and the Italians. But in the end, it will be German science that wins. Be on the side of the winners. In his speech at Stockholm, Joliot spoke about the potential energy and explosive power of the atom. So it is not just me, but a Nobel laureate. Now, thanks to their prize, the Joliots received a lot of money from the French government. And they've kept on working like mad for the last three years. In Berlin, Meitner and Hahn work with the same experiments. They bombard uranium with neutrons. The same experiments, different conclusions. The Germans have nothing but contempt for the French interpretation. But the French insist the Germans are making basic errors, that they are either blind or stupid. They fight like cats and dogs, but ultimately they will find something. At least they are working. Here in England, everyone dozes. Nobody wants to help me. Even Weissmann. He promises that his Jewish Congress will give me money for research. But nothing. Weizmann's a great chemist. He should understand what you're doing. <laughs> he understands. But he's become obsessed with politics. A Jewish homeland. Where we can discuss nuclear physics with the sheep under the olive trees. Washington suits you? How can I thank you, Leo? I'm sure George Washington University will suit me very well. What about you? Organizing escapes, finding positions for your friends, begging pennies for research. You should be in America yourself, working. Vienna, yes. Yes, sir, this is the exchange. I'll get to America, Vienna. Edward, when I finish getting the great minds out of Europe. Hello. Uh, uh, Gertrude Weiss, please. I'll be the last one to leave for a change. <laughs> I want to arrive in America that has brains. Hello? Uh, Trudy? Yes? It's you, <laughs> yes. It's Leo. Leo? Uh, Trudy, I have great news for you. Leo, where have you been? I haven't Trudy, heard from Trudy, listen you. to me, please. You never write to me anymore. Yes, I'm still fond of you. But Leo, how do I know? Denver, I find you a position at a hospital in Denver. Leo, where is what Denver? is Denver? Uh, out west. Out west where? Not far from... Uh, from Hollywood, Hollywood. Hollywood, California. <laughs> you become a star of medicine. <laughs> what? What are you doing? We are looking for anti-German propaganda. Call the director, please. First, you will explain this. Then you will clean up this mess and put everything back as you found it. First, you're going to wear this. By order of the Reich, you no longer have the right to teach. To hell with your Reich! I'm an Austrian! You don't listen to the radio. Austria is now part of the Reich. And you are part of Germany's Jewish problem. Put it on. Put it on! Attenzione, attenzione. The Rome Paris Express will leave for the French border within five minutes. All Italian citizens must present their exit permits to the border officers. Viva il Duce. Uh, sorry. Where are our papers? Your papers have been delayed. What for? Excuse me, this man has just won the Nobel Prize. He's on his way to pick it up in Stockholm. Enrico, I am the Jew. They probably want me. But 
But what will they do to us? Nelma, don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. They will let us go to Stockholm. The fascists couldn't be so stupid. They want me to pick up my prize. They want an Italian Nobel laureate. They must want that. Maybe we should jump. Please, keep the window closed. They apologize for the delay. Have a good trip to Sweden. <laughs> now can we go? And after Sweden, America. Tante Lisa! Uh, we're one kilometer from the border. In 15 minutes, you'll be in Denmark. Mm. Go on with our schedule. Work well, Otto. And write, please. And tell me everything you do. Of course. God protect you, my dear Lisa. For once in your life, be careful. Auf Wiedersehen, Lisa. Results from Irene Joliot. No, I won't read one more word of her careless drivel. Read it, please. Not one decent hill to take me away from you. Han is too good a chemist to make a mistake. If he says he found barium after he bombarded uranium, then that is what he found. Which is half the weight of uranium. Then Irene Joliot was right. The uranium atom has split in two. The explosion of a uranium atom would release an energy equal to its mass times the speed of light squared. Yeah, 238 yeah, yeah. times yeah. 900,000, yeah, 200 yeah, million yeah, electron yeah. volts yeah. won't even scratch yeah. a single cell on a dragonfly's yeah. wing. But, but with a single grain of uranium, multiply that by millions and billions of atoms. Oh, Dante Lisa! Dante Lisa! Power to light entire cities. To send an ocean liner to the moon! <laughs> an ocean liner? What do you call it when cells divide? Uh, cellular fission, I think. Yeah! Yeah! That's it! Yeah! 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 Fission! Yeah! Fission! Yeah! Yeah! 
Atomic fish. Fish. Atomic fission! How stupid of us. It's a quarter past, sir. Fission. Hurry for, for five Mr. years, Moore. every scientist in Europe has been skimming the surface. Niels, you will miss the boat. It was like a game of blind. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Please, Niels, come on. Come on. You'll make the announcement in America? It will create quite a sensation. Have a good Please trip, go. sir. Quickly, Jacob. Leave now. Quickly, sir. Verify it. And send the results to me. Yes, dear, Tell we will. Up. I can't say a word until after. Good we have the physical and chemical proof. You will Good have night. it. America's amazing. <laughs> Instant. Oh. Well, you said this was coffee. Yeah. Edward just likes it on principle. Because it works. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. They have instant fruit juices mm. and instant eggs. Instant everything. Yeah. If you drink both of those, you won't sleep. I've been awake for weeks organizing the conference. One more night won't matter. <laughs> I think your friend must have missed it. It's home. possible he couldn't afford a ticket. He hasn't been here long, and uh, Leo Zillard's always without a penny. If we'd known, we could have driven him up from New York. Oh, he's probably just in his bath, dreaming of flight without wings. Now, this is instant Ooh, fabric. fabric. Ah, oh, very nice. so this is nylon. No, no. Mm -hmm. Hexamethylene diamine of a deep big acid. Now, gentlemen, featured speaker, Dr. Niels Bohr. Oh. <laughs> you told me you had an announcement. Start with your announcement, Professor. Oh, you think so? Right away? Yes, straightforward. Americans like that. Um, yeah. <coughs> Esteemed colleagues. When it's bombarded with neutrons, the uranium atom splits. Race to verify. Who will be the first? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> My calculations arrive at the number three million. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a match? Sorry, Professor. I yeah, haven't got one. Like one gram of uranium freed would therefore release the energy of three hundred tons. Yeah. Coal. I checked that today with my oh, lab. Already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things are moving so fast. It's America. Hey, Dr. Lawrence. I'm Henry Lawrence. Uh, Washington Post, sir. They want your photograph. Mm. Oh. <laughs> well, Professor Bohr, it was a picture you should be taking. Oh. Maybe, but uh, they want an American. America? Mm. Why don't you stand right over here, Doc? I thought Americans only knew about Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> they credit him with the invention of everything. From the lighter... Uh, come on. To, to the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Thanks. All right, gentlemen, one more for safety. Over your left, Doc. Can I help you, sir? Thank you, gentlemen. Leo. Great picture. What have you been? Walking. What did you hear? Yes, yes, I have. But fission's already on use. Check the morning edition. Where's Fermi? He's at my flat. 
He's been working all day. He needed sleep. Let's wake him up, huh? Come on, come on. I can't. I can't. Yes, love. Yes, love. It's me, Enrico. Yeah. Dr. Fermi. Shh. What happened? It's just huh? Leo Zellard. He wanted to speak. Are you crazy? It's Leo. Laura, it's Leo Zellard. Oh. Nice to meet you. I've worked with Shh. you. Quite. You saw neutron, Ow. Dr. Ow. Fermi. And I must say that although you narrowly missed being the author of... Uh. Enrico, Leo believes that oh. each fission oh. of uranium may release more neutrons. Oh, yes, yes. And if the multiplication is sufficient, a chain reaction. And if a chain reaction, a potential explosion, a bomb. In theory, but there is not a chance in ten that such a combustion would happen. If I have pneumonia, and my doctor says that I have one chance in ten to die of it, I would worry. Yes. The Germans were the first to discover fission. They could be the first to exploit it for military purposes. So, what can we do about it? I know nothing. I brought my beryllium from England and I spent half the day raising money to rent a gram of radium. Now I have a source of neutrons. You have facilities. Do you want my beryllium, my radium? Now, the most important point. We must not inform the Germans what we are doing. Yeah. None of it. We must stop publishing. From now on, as long as it takes, nothing public. No congresses, no interviews. Nuts. You mix science and politics, Leon. Censorship is contrary to all tradition. And Germany will be contrary to all traditional enemies. I left Italy to forget politics. There will be war. Munich only delayed it. I'm a scientist. I believe in freedom of information. And so, you believe in helping the Nazis. Next week on Race for the Bomb. You know the scientists in America? They're friends. They're not the kind of men who were... They are men we threw out, Carl. Jews. Angry men. Men who have every reason in the world to fight the Nazis. And they will fight us. Weapons don't win wars. Morale wins war. May I remind you that the President of the United States wants this bomb. All right. How much do you want? Our allies are at war with America. Make sure... These men get everything they need and make sure they work as quickly as possible. Well, the president wants the best military engineer we have. Who would you say that he is, General? Good day, madam. Hello. Uh, we are looking for Dr. Albert Einstein. Join Allison Smith for CBC News Magazine every weeknight at 7, 7.30 in Newfoundland. Make it CBC.